According to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you all the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. And for this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Got a lot to do in a brief time today. With Trinity Sunday, Father's Day, and Mission Sunday. So, Trinity Sunday. Doctrine of the Trinity. One God, three persons. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, what, does, what does that tell us about ourselves? And... Um, what it tells us is that the heart of reality is not one thing, not one person, but three persons in relationship and one God. In our country, we were attuned to be individuals. There's a value in that work that goes into that attunement. Uh, we realize our individual strengths and weaknesses and our gifts and the particular set of possibilities that are open before us as individuals. As a way to run a nation, to run a society and understand ourselves is not helpful. It really is it? We have the strongest economy, but in terms of reported happiness, we're not there. In terms of health uh, outcomes, we're not there. In terms of education outcomes, we're not there. Because simply centering on the individual, we only have meaning as individuals in relationship with other people. We cannot exist without relationships with other people. And we only make sense to ourselves in relationship to other people. And the Trinity is the mystery that shows, that shows the reason for that. Because that's the way it is at the very center of things. And while we have reason to prize our individuality, concentrating that will buy us nothing but unhappiness. And so it's a very valuable mystery for us to reflect upon. Father's Day. Important day. Remember our fathers. I remember my father. I really like one thing about my father. When my mother said, wait till your father comes home, I knew I was scot free. Because he would take me into my bedroom and he'd say, Charles, when I clap my hands, yell. <laughs> and that pleased my mother. But unfortunately, my father had a bad father, so he worked real hard at being a kind father. I disappointed him in a big way, though I became a priest. He was anti-clerical. He was a devout Catholic. His attendance at Mass and his, and his reception was really quite something to see. But he did not like priests at all. He did not reflect them. It came from the particular strain of German Catholicism from which he came. And um, even though his mother was Irish, he was raised in a German uh, community, German-speaking community. 
although they have been in the country for, for generations. But anyway, so every time I come back from the seminary, he would say, Charles, you can leave any time, any time. You can leave in the middle of the year. Well, I got a danger, you can't leave now. But what, what, he sort of messed things up for himself because he was so hostile towards priests that only very good priests passed his filter. And the strongest men in my life growing up in the earliest years were priests. They were professors, they were, uh, they were missionaries. They were very interesting and, li and uh, uh, lively existences. And that attracted me. And he's the one, if I had met all the other fools, you know, uh, early on, maybe I wouldn't have gone in. But I did. Uh, and, but so, but I just had a bit of sentiment because sentiment is appropriate for the day. But how does one honor a father? Two basic rules of Christian life able to enable us to handle all relationships. Two movements of the Christian life are thanksgiving and forgiveness. That's what our lives are supposed to be about. That's like the heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. Thanksgiving, forgiveness. It is to thank the Father. Not saying grandiose things, because if you say grandiose things, then the person that your father has to say, oh, and you're a wonderful child, you know? He's got no, you sort of, when you, you, we talk in, in, in such grandiose terms, we're fishing for a compliment in return. But to say, I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you for that. If I, what you said then. I want to thank you for this aspect of yourself. In my father's case, patience. And I ask your forgiveness. For the ways in which I have failed you, and then you mention a way. And you forgive the Father anything you're holding against Him. That is the honoring of a Father. Missionary something. It, the, 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 there's an 8.30 Mass in St. In Margaret's and there's a, a 9 here and the guy, a priest, another retired priest of our diocese, Monsignor Cartland, uh, is preaching on the, uh, so getting, say, uh, being at the 9.30 there and getting to the 9 o'clock, 8.30 there and 9 o'clock here is hard, so I'm going to speak for him. And I, he's speaking about the parish, a diocese in Paraguay. And I know something about Paraguay. It ends up that the diocese I know more about borders on, on his diocese and has the same demographics and the same econ economic description as uh, his, uh, the, the diocese that we're talking about, the bordering dioceses. And a friend of mine, two friends of mine actually, the seminary I went to, we had a big emphasis, it was a diocese seminary, we had a big emphasis on mission. And among the, the cohort that I went through with, 15 spent at least 10 years in the, in the uh, foreign missions, even though they were diocesan priests of the United States. And one was Stanley Rother. He was a German-American guy, and, and uh, in, at that time, and sort of, everybody thought the Irish controlled the church. All the Germans made a point of introducing themselves to one another. And so he had a German background. I had a German surname, although I was mostly Irish. Um, and I got to observe him and talk with him and, and things like that. And he was an outstanding guy, kind of pious without being uh, sickening about it, um, lively, um, and very big into doing things with his hands. Uh, he was a farmer and he, he liked dealing with the earth and stuff like that. Anyway, he goes off to, um, to Paraguay, and then there's these battles that started going between the government and uh, revolutionaries, and then another group in between the government and the revolutionaries. And what was happening was they were killing uh, the villagers. These people are Mayan, they're up in the hills. Uh, the, the land is lush but not productive. It's a lot of greenery but not much of stuff that you can use. And they're largely uneducated. And uh, people were 
working to to, uh, to, to revolt about things and uh, bring in a new system. And some of them were probably connected with the Cubans in one way or another. And what would what was happening is that the um, anybody who showed some gumption, they took the person out and they shot him. In those two dioceses, over this period of 15 years, they killed 22 priests and religious. You know, so this is sort of blood of martyrs, man. And Stan knew it was going, came home for a while to figure out whether he should go back or what, what he should do. He came back, went back, back to his family, went back to our seminar, and decided he would go. Uh, and he said what we would expect he would say, that, you know, that if they uh, kill me, I'm not going to go uh, quick, silently into the night. I'm going to fight back. And of course, they did kill him. Uh, and we were all happy to see that his, his knuckles were bruised. So that they probably, spent, uh, they probably paid a little bit of uh, cost for, for what they did. And who are these people that he gave his life for? They're Mayans, underdeveloped, um, neglected for centuries, looked down upon, um, and live very simple lives. And the faith is kept alive there, not by the clergy. A pastor may get to your village once every year or less. But catechists or lay people who are trained, they sort of get the people together and pass on the faith as best they can. And what they're working to do now that the bloodshed has stopped, the, the government is dysfunctional and non-functional. The, their big interest now is education. And what, what's happening is that you would get the kids to go to school, kids would go to school and there'd be no teacher because the government exercised no supervision over the teachers, so they showed up when they wanted to. Anyway, so the church and the, the priests and the catechists have gone and um, trained people themselves and taken over some of the positions of superintendent of education, things like that, to move education along. Now, these days everybody worries about, well, if you give the church money, what's it going to do with it? I think this is a safe bet. Because the uh, Monsignor Gartland goes down there once or twice a year. He's had a long, uh, he's had decades long connection there. And when we count the collection for the missions, that would made a check that will go to our mission society, then uh, it will go to that diocese. And Gartland is going to know how much that was. And he's going to ask the pastors there and the people, how much they've gotten. So I think it's a good deal. I'm going to, I, I'm going to give at least a hundred because it's safe money, good investment. And I ask people who do not support the church now for reasons of conscience, that it's important uh, if you're not church, uh, supporting the hierarchical church, it's important that you be still investing in the church and that you find opportunities to give um, where the money will go to build up the church where you can have some confidence that that's the case. I think, I believe mostly, you know, like in our diocese, it's a fairly safe place to invest because each parish is audited every other year with an external forensic audit and the diocese that, uh, submits itself to something like that every year. I think you're, you're safe investing in our diocese, but uh, if you're, if but if you, you're really really uncertain, uh, I think this is a good investment. And the second collection will be taken up at the time of the Our Father, so that gives you time to write out a check if you want. And if you do write out a check, make it to St. Catherine's Church, and it will, it will be all the checks will be cashed by the by the parish, and then. Uh, one check will be written, which will go to the um, go to the mission office. So it's a good investment. These people, a little bit of money is a big bang for them, because they got really nothing. And people have died for them, and we can send them a few bucks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.